Plus One Video Podcast. This is episode 70, Rhinebeck Recap. I'm your host, Steph, also known as the Knitting Samurai on Ravelry and now Instagram. Come find me on Instagram. I love it, love it, love it. Uh, yeah, hi, how's your week been? It's been 10 days or so. <laughs> so I have a whole bunch of yarn goodness to show you from Rhinebeck, and it was just such a great time. Um, and I'll go over that at the end. Really, that's, I don't have a lot of knitting this week. I know, can you believe it? For me, not a lot of knitting. But it's true. At least it doesn't seem like it. I've been kind of monogamous. So, um, yeah. So, let's just jump it right in, shall we? Okay. So, uh, first up, I want to mention the baby blanket knit along. You have, let's see, I wrote my notes yesterday. Seven days to finish any baby blankets you're working on. I am working on the Vivid. I have five squares done. I didn't work on any this week, so I'm not plugging that out to show you, but um, get your finished pictures up there and you can enter, I think five times total, whatever. I'm not real fussy. So enter as many finished baby blankets as you can get done between now and October 31st and the drawing will be on the, probably the third or fourth is when I should record next. So there you go. There's that. We're also doing the 100th episode um, knitty, Knitting Samurai Plus One Colorway Knit Along. And that's also ending the 31st. I have seen so many awesome projects out there. And yes, I do have some empty needles here. Um, and you guys are at a different angle today, so you're going to see a little bit more of the cats, more than likely. So, what the... <laughs> okay, there we go. Alright, let's, let's get myself organized here. So... Uh, the yarn is dyed by Inspiration Dye Works, and for the knit along, we're going to have um, two patterns up for prizes, as well as a gift certificate to uh, Inspiration Dye Works shop. So that was she's donated that very generously. So I did finish my, <laughs> and then I'll get flooded by cats. Byzantine mitts. These are by La Maison Rallale or. Something like that. Links in the show notes. <laughs> I obviously have not woven in my ends. That's what you're watching me do. Tuck them in here. But um, I did use Emily Rock's Vanilla Bean, her slip stitch pattern. And it, it's really interesting. So this is the first one. And the reason I know is the second one rolls. I don't know why. I don't know if I was smarter and did work some decreases in on the first one before the I-cord bind off and didn't do that on the second one. So it's going to have to get a little bit of fierce blocking there. But you can see them. They're lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. They almost match up. Not quite. Well, pretty darn close. The thumbs are the most different. But whatever. Yeah, this thumb, my second thumb, ended up with less blue if I was going to end at the same point and have the teal for the eye. I know, right? These are important things that you should be paying very close attention to. Um, the... I knit them as the pattern recommended, and they are rather large on me. I did the decreases, and um, there's a lot of extra fabric here. I would have liked more fitted mitts, so maybe I should have done a some sort of ribbing. I don't know. I thought the slip stitch would bring it in. The hand on this one fits much better, so I maybe snuck in some extra decreases here than over here. I don't know. They need to be ends woven in and blocked, and that could change the whole story about them, right? Isn't blocking wonderful? <laughs> so those are done. That's my second FO with this yarn out of the same skein. So I did the baby hat, the uh, little cap, the Norwegian cap. I've now knit the fingerless mitts. And then to go with the baby cap, to make it a nice little set, I am working on a leg warmer. So here's the first one. It's finished. It's kind of funny shaped. I know, I keep improv in my patterns and modifying and I really, it's not going to show, right? So can you see it even? That it's a little bit of a pair that about here I did some decreases so that it would be a little narrower going up. So really it should sit like this on the little, little leg. And um, 
and then this goes over the top of the foot. So there you go. The pattern calls for it to be seven inches long. I want to say mine is, I don't know. I don't know, but I'd like to know. Oh, and I might sneeze. Hopefully not. Hopefully no sneezing. Mine's just over six. So it's fine. It's a little short, but I did take what I have left in the skein, count the number of teal stripes, and then split it in half. So I knew I could use three teal stripes on this pair. And three for the, on this single, and three for the second one. So I need to cast on the second one and get going with that. So that's where that is. Um, and those were both knit on US 2.5, 3.0 millimeter needles. So uh, one week left, I definitely can finish a baby leg warmer. I'm trying to keep my stitch marker on the needle here. I can definitely finish a baby knit or leg warmer in a week. So, and <clears throat> when I was pregnant, or when Roland was little, I didn't understand the point of leg warmers. And we have a carrier. I guess I just, I don't know, because I remember going to watch, um, we went to Concord to see Obama and the governor, governor uh, Maggie Hassan speak in November when he of that year. He was, was it last year or the year before? Anyway, um, so we went and his, he, he, I had him in the carrier and he had on fleecy, like a one piece fleece jumpsuit and there was a bunch of his legs sticking out and that was the moment when I realized, oh, and like I kept tugging up his socks, but the socks had a thin layer of athletic sock or whatever, that cottony sock material, elastic cotton sock, um, wasn't going to keep him warm and so that's when I realized, mm, leg warmers do have a purpose. They do. <laughs> So, also on the needles are my tri-corner cable socks. So these probably got the least amount of love after the visit. I just got no love. Um, last time you saw them, I had I was three green stripes in, so that's here. And now I've done one red, and and this was basically lunchtime knitting yesterday, just because I was like, I haven't really worked on that. So I need to get my butt in here. This one I'm slightly further, about to start the gusset increases. So I did about. Two inches, three, three inches on this one. So, tri-corner cable socks. They have this cute little cable on the outside of each foot, or the inside, depending on how you wear them, right? And um, those are a Christmas present. This is Knit Picks Felici in the Jingle Bell. Jingle? Jingle colorway. So, my notes this morning are, I typed them up at work, <laughs> on, uh, on the, off the blogger. And then printed it, and I swear it's an eye chart. It's like, it must be size 7 font. And I wear glasses normally. I don't for you guys, but I normally do. So it's a good test. Are you almost ready for my back stuff? I know. I know it's coming. So I worked on this. This was my big my big push this week. And what is in this gorgeous bag? You're saying, I know, I know. Don't you love it? It's a bird leg bag. Birdlegbags.com. One leg. Not plural. The only S in that is at the end of the leg. Bur bags. Plural bags. That's the only plural there. Anyway, so this is, as I get caught up on words, my vodka gimlet. Oh, such a tiny picture. I should really blow it up for you guys. You're really not going to be able to tell anything from that, but I'll show it anyway. Vodka gimlet by Baby Cocktails, Thea Coleman. Um, I am working on the US size 46. I'm using Leading Men Fiber Arts on a needle that is entirely too small. This is the Dramatig base and the colorway is industrial, which is this gorgeous, gorgeous blue-black color. It's gonna be awesome with really dark beans. Mm -hmm. So that's how deep I have, what, what is that, like 10 inches into this? I hope you can see it. I should do some tipping. It's just, it's amazing, the, the colors that are in here, that I can see some maroon, some black, some light blue. It's just, so, and it's all <clears> overall. <throat> Leading Men Fiber Arts, this gorgeous blue on the Dramatic base, which is uh, their DK 100% Superwash Merino base. And this is the color Industrial, which is basically a navy, but then you can, it has high lows in it, it has reddish shades, purple shades, black shades. It's just gorgeous. 
gorgeous, 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 and some light blue bits. I'm alternating two skeins, and I couldn't be happier with the way this looks. So, the yarn, very nice. The pattern, <clears throat> I'm going crazy. Okay, I'm at the point where I should be splitting off for the sleeves, right, at that point in the yoke. For that point, she gives a distance measurement how long the yoke should be, and she gives a stitch count of what you should have on your needle. I cast on the right number of stitches. <clears throat> My stitch and row gauge is spot on, right? Because when I started, I started on US size sevens, I think is what she recommends. And I did two rows, said, oh no, that's too too loose for me, and I just switched to size seven, uh, to size sixes, and kept going. Because I know I'm going to be picking up a collar, and that little bit of difference in gauge is going to be hidden underneath the collar anyway, so it didn't matter to me. I just keep going. So, <clears throat> I know my gauge is spot on both stitch and row, right? I said that. Right number of stitches, I'm now at the correct length. And I have nowhere near enough stitches on my needles. I've had, I have stitch markers where all my increases go. And if I count it proportionally, the number it's off in the back matches the number it's off in the front. So it's the same overall. <clears throat> I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. If I break off the sleeves now, I'll be knitting a size 40 inch bust based on my gauge. That's not going to work. I can add a few more stitches in the underarm. To cut back on the number of rows. This is what I'm thinking of doing. <clears throat> if I go four more rows past, that's about an inch longer in the yoke. That's not going to be too bad. And then I cast on extra stitches at the underarm to eat up to get that extra stitch count. I think I can sort of fudge it and get there, but I have no idea what went wrong. Like, huh? Two plus two, and you know, I know a lot of podcasters are really quick to say user error, user error. I need, I guess I need to go look at the errata and see if, or not errata, but people's comments, see if other people are, had the same problem or what, or is the math off on just the 46 is, I don't know, I don't know, but I'm so disappointed because I have really loved working with this yarn, but at 400 plus stitches a row, it's a slog, and I'm not really, like, I know if I were to stop or rip out or start again, I would be dead. I wouldn't do it. Like, there's a reason why I've knit a lot of pieced sweaters this year and not a lot of top downs because, I mean, ugh, stitch count is huge. So, <sighs> that's my sad story. So, if you have any advice, any advice, I would love to hear it on what I should do. If you think that I'm crazy adding, so I think she calls for four stitches on the underarm as your cast on. I'm going to do eight, maybe ten. Does that seem unreasonable? It doesn't to me and other sweaters I've done. But, yell at me. Tell me what you think. I could really use some help on this. So, there we go. Hmm. <laughs> I also want to remind you that this would be my favorite project this month. What's your favorite project this month? <laughs> we have a thread on the group where people are posting what they're really enjoying working on. It's a great enabling thread. Just go over there. One entry per person. And this month the prize is... The skein of vintage, Broco Vintage. So it's uh, the same color I used for Roland's Rhinebeck sweater, and it is the base color of my Vivid blanket, but this one is a different dye lot, and it very much shows. So <clears throat> I'm not going to include it in my blanket. And it's free to a good home that has a good pattern this month, or project this month. So there you go. That's what's going on here. Um, Rhinebeck, 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 Rhinebeck. Excuse me, I have a frog in my throat. <clears throat> All right, so let me tell you at the start of the adventure. Started at five o'clock on Friday night, and we headed out. Well, we went to dinner first because we wanted to leave really closer to seven so that Ro would have time to sleep in the car because he's not the best of riders and it's a long ride. <laughs> so we started at, at five. We went out for a really great dinner and um, drove for like three hours. Steve drove by club. We got to his aunt and uncle's house in Western Mass at like, uh, I want to say 9.30. Friday night, set up a pack and play, put Roland right down. I made the effort of looking like I was awake for another half an hour, and then I just went to bed too because I was so tired from the day and all that. And um, the next morning, I was up and at it at 6 o'clock. I had the guys in the car by 7. 
on the road it's another just short of two hours driving back from their house can you imagine knowing that close i have no idea what they're missing <laughs> actually they're getting they're really good about humoring me and my my knitting crazy and not looking at me like i have three heads anymore you know 10 years ago whatever they were like you knit but anyways uh, <laughs> now it's like oh yeah she knits yeah she'll do crazy things for yarn yeah we know she will so we got there at nine in the car i was just like a chatterbox and ro was so funny it's the first time that he's ever just read a book you know he had one of his i think it was like things that go big 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 picture book with uh vehicles and airplanes and all kinds of things that go in it and he had this book for like six months but he just sat there and just as sweet as can be with it on his lap and read for two hours read but just very calm so that was really nice for us because we had memories of last year and all the screaming and we had to stop like repeatedly to let him out and walk and just try and keep him calm so we didn't have that nightmare this year yay so if you're doing the math at home that's about a five hour drive to run back for us so we get there and in the car right chatterbox oh my god oh my god i'm going to run back ah, we're gonna okay so and i had looked up the vendors i wanted to see and i didn't share any of this excitement with you so i'm sharing it with you now um i wanted to hit miss babs right because i have deep sea jellyfish but i won't knit with it <laughs> because i love it so much it's actually in the lead of the show it's my favorite color ever so i um wanted to get a second skein so i would be all right with knitting with it and I wanted to hit the fold for the Socks That Rocks Rare Gem. I, that's not the only time of year I will buy Socks That Rocks. And I, up, everything I own of Socks That Rocks is a Rare Gem. So I find those very intriguing and well-priced and just fun. So one of a kind. Here you go. Uh, <clears throat> so I want to do those. And then, of course, see Into the World. Because, you know, yes, I am in the club. But it's nice to see the whole wall of them all together. And... Oh, maybe I want a second skein of that club color that I already got. So that was the game plan, right? We're Miss Babs, then we'll hit the fold, then we'll hit into the world. <laughs> so we get there. Roland had actually dozed off. Steve was tired. They slept in the car for the first hour. And I just, I was like, boom, at the gate, running in. So excited. Up the hill towards the buildings. Because the, um, those three all happen to be in two buildings next to each other. Over in the building section, not in the barn section. And so... I get up there and there's a line of people it must have been a hundred people long and i'm sure you're gonna hear about it on every podcast and that was the miss babs line and i was like that's crazy like socks the rocks line or the fold line has never even been that big and that's usually the big one so i was like okay well i guess i'll go have the fold first so i did that and i got two skeins of rare gems that i think are a match like i looked at them and said yeah, but I can almost, I didn't want to un, uncurl them, whatever, untwist them in the booth, but I, they're definitely a match set of something, so who knows why they fell into the Rare Gems classification, maybe there's a knot, maybe a color's off, I don't know, but they're twins, and so I got them for a sweater for road, this is a medium weight, so I have about 810 yards here for a sweater for him, so I got that, and I was like, phew. I mean, I made a Rhinebeck purchase, yay, and then <clears throat> by that point, because there was still a line there, and there was definitely the elbowing, and the, can you hand me, and oh, put this back, and give me that one, and you know, being social with people, um, so there was that going on, and after I bought this, I went out, got some air, because I'm not great in crowds, it's fine, but I definitely would rather be in a wide open space, so I went out, checked my phone, they were awake, Went back, got the guys, came up, looked at the Miss Babs line. Different people, definitely, but still the same length. And at that point, I want to say it's like 10 o'clock. So I looked at Steve, and he was like, well, what's on your list? If, you know, that was your top th priority, what's your next priority? I was like, well, let's go eat artichokes. So <laughs> the artichoke line, which is usually just as, you know, 50, 60 people long, was around lunchtime, was, I think, 10. So we got in. I got my French and my fried, and so I had them, and we went and sat in one of the tents to eat, because it was sunny, and Steve was worried about sunburning, but didn't want to put any sunscreen on, which we had with us. So I went and sat in one of the tents, and I offered, but they let me eat all of it. <laughs> so 
Well, I did. I really enjoyed my artichoke breakfast. So I had my delicious, uh, delicious artichoke brunch. <laughs> was so happy at that point. And then we went back to, I believe we went back to um, Tuxet Rock, the fold. And I just had to look again, <laughs> just in case. And I think this is Hobbit Garden. It's after seeing it so many times on Two Tangled Skates, this blue, green, purple colorway, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Anyways, it's gorgeous. I skated it up, kicked it, whatever, hand wound it in the car um, because it's going to be for some baby gifts because now I love leg warmers. Now I realize the beauty of the leg warmer. Yeah, that's where I was going earlier. So this one's also medium weight. So, thank you, Linus. You were so in my way. I'm glad you're pleased. So then I went up to the fold that's in the same, not the fold, that was the fold, similar building. Went up to Into the World and I got a skein of Kimura, I don't know, on her, on their um, MCN base. I really like the way they set up their booth because it was like, okay, here are the colors that we're offering, but then here are the four different bases that you can get them in. So that was nice because you could see the different ways that the dye took each color and like vegetable medley was the other one I got and it really only looked pretty to my eye in the base that I bought it in. So this uh, gorgeous teal, not teal, green, aqua, purple, it's a rainbow, it's a jeweled rainbow. I don't know if I have this one or not to be honest but I like the MCN base and I wanted this for some sort of neckwear. Thought it would be very pretty. So we did that. Um, while we're walking around the fairgrounds, we met up with lots and lots of people. I was so happy to talk to everybody. It's just, it's wonderful. And, you know, you talk for five minutes and you're like, oh, I gotta talk to them for an hour. I wish I had, could have talked to them more. <laughs> so we went over to the, there was an auction going on and um, Roland thought it was a song. So he was dancing. <laughs> Cutest little thing. There was actually a, quite a bit of space where we were standing in the auction barn. And so he was just dancing, dancing, dancing. And by the time, like I left them in there and went and looked at some more, went through a few of the barns by myself. And uh, by the time I came back, Steve was like, I think we could get 354. I really do. For, for the going rate of lambs, yeah. Rolling could at least bring in 350. So we were laughing about that. Um, <clears throat> when we were over there, I'm not gonna be able to get this stuff in order, so. We'll just jump in. I saw Dragonfly Fibers. I've never used their yarn before. I, I'm definitely an orange trend here for me this year. And so I went through their stuff and I got these three skeins of her Traveler Base, which is 100% Superwash Merino. I believe it's uh, five to six stitches per inch. So I'm gonna put that at a DK or a worst of weight. But I really wanted one more. One more would have been the perfect amount for a sweater of this, but mm, nope, they didn't have it. So 280 yards, so I have, what is that, 28, oh, I hate these word numbers. If it were 300, I would have 900 minus 60 is 840. So it's going to be some sort of vest. I have an orange cable vest, I'll be honest with you, that I knit, that I didn't knit, no. It's, a, it's for poles. It's a cable orange vest. It has this great collar, diagonal closure in the front, <coughs> long point, half a third of the way down my thigh. Um, I've had that since before, since the year before I got pregnant, and he's two. So that's like four years old. I was looking at it this year, and I'm like, mm, I probably shouldn't be wearing this anymore. So I might try and knock it off because I do love the orange, orange, like short sleeve or cap sleeve sweater with a white little sleeve sticking out. So, we'll see. That's kind of where I'm thinking. Maybe I'll go. See what I can find out there. I'm, in my head, I'm like, oh, like the Top and Z cardigan or maybe a Hey Teach or something like that. But then again, maybe I'll just try and knock off because I do love that silhouette on me. It looks way better. So that was that. I also hit the um, Steam Valley fibers. They're not one that <clears throat> you typically hear a lot about. I had probably from my first year at Rhinebeck, I bought a couple scans from them. I've since knit them up. It's taken me a while to knit them up. So this was my fifth year at Rhinebeck and I missed a year. So like six years. So um, 
but it it's it wears very nice. Their color sense is very very pretty and super reasonably priced. So twenty four dollars for uh, four hundred and seventy five yards of one hundred percent superwash fingering weight. And this is their candlelight colorway. Candlelight. Oh, and she dated the, the date that she died. So I think that's very pretty. Another another good neckwear one. So. That was Steam Valley Fibers. And then I finally got into Ms. Bass. And that was kind of, you know, I went back and checked the line and there were probably 20 people in line at that point. And I thought, okay, it's now or never. And I told Steve, all right, I'm just gonna go, you know, entertain the little one and take him down to the animals, whatever. Let me try. And so I got some yarn. <laughs> and while I was in there, the line grew and grew and grew. So I, it ended up being like a, a an hour plus to get yarn from them. So um, this is Yauza in the Berlin colorway. So uh, Busy Minds Design Steph, I met her at SSK, super sweet. She had sent me a message and said, I got a skein of Berlin. I don't remember where she got it, stitches maybe. And I need another skein to do what I wanna do. Can you grab it for me? So I went in and not knowing how popular this yarn is, I mean, I know Yowza is popular, but not knowing how popular this colorway is. And so then I start reading and I'm like, oh. And then I see this beautiful skein and I pick it up and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna buy that for me. And then I read the title and it's Berlin. And I'm like, oh, I have to find a second beautiful skein. <laughs> so I actually was able to find like four of them and take my pick. So I got a skein for Seth and a skein for me of this. Don't know what it's mine's gonna be, but it's such a generous skein, worsted weight, 400, 500 yards, 560 yards of skein, so definitely a great deal. And I did get another skein of deep sea jellyfish. Whew. Can rest easy about that. And then I saw this color, Zombie Prom. I've not seen it before. It's definitely in the family of deep sea jellyfish, and it's gorgeous. So it came home with me too. This is a Babette. I don't know what that means. And it's um, their yummy two ply fingering super wash. So again, 26 bucks, not a bad deal for. 400 yards. So there's my haul. There's my stash. I went to the podcaster meetup, saw lots of great podcasters and viewers, and it was great. I was giving out buttons. Um, didn't stay for the whole time. Stayed for about a half an hour, because by that point we were just spent. We were. It was a long day for us, and we're tired. And yeah, I think we sat down for a little bit, and then I hit Miss Babs, and then it was like, okay, let's just go. Let's go sit in the parking lot and wait to leave with our shoes off and our feet off. And so that's what we did. Um, it was a great day. And then we drove back. And then Sunday morning we visited with the family and left like 10 o'clock and drove the rest of the way home. So um, I realized running back is like a 10 hour car ride for me. So maybe, maybe not next year. <laughs> we'll see how we do. But it was a great time. And if you didn't get to go, um, yeah, I'm sorry. I was going to do something funny, but it's just, yeah. <laughs> if you didn't get to go, try and make it sometime because it is worth just going and sitting and watching the fashion show go by. And there were so many people that I saw just sitting, just sitting and knitting, you know, it's like, go hang out, have fun. It's so much fun. So that's all I have for you this time. I hope you have a great 10 days or so until we talk again and take care. Bye.